Now, this month of August, I was told by the pastor that it is the theme of last day events. Now, it is uh, rather a, uh, an enviable task to uh, be scheduled the last one of this team. Uh, well, I suppose that uh, uh, most of these uh, subjects have been uh, covered by most speakers that came uh, before me. But nonetheless, I was able to uh, share with you a message uh, this morning. And, uh, you know, if you were to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus a question that is still the question that has been asked by believers as well as unbelievers down over the past several generations. And even today, many are still asking this question. Now, what is this question? Let's turn to uh, the book of Matthew. Chapter 24, which I believe that uh, most of us are very familiar. You know, verse 3, it says that, and, he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You know, uh, Jesus revealed a number of events, signposts that would lead towards the coming of Jesus. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, uh, strife, uh, uh, crime, and all that. Now, this morning, I'm not going to dwell upon natural disasters, uh, wars, uh, earthquakes, uh, in, uh, volcanic eruptions, and so on and so forth. Now, we, are, we all know that uh, these are now rather uh, common events. But there's one word which we can describe all of these events, all of these signposts. You know, you ask a statistician, they will tell you one thing about all these events. And that one word is escalation. Now, escalation means what? The in increase in frequency as well as intensity. There was so much a loss of property and lives whenever there's a natural disaster, for example. You know, unheard of, right? And uh, we find that as we approach the end of time, more and more of this will happen. But there's one uh, part of uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, 24, which I would like to draw your attention to. And uh, that is found in the verse 37, which uh, uh, Dr. Toh has just read. And it says, But as in the days of Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, so that's the meaning of the title of my sermon, Template. You know what's a template? It means a copy of, or an exact example of. That's what the meaning of template. And verse 8, it says that, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, casual reading makes one wonder what's so wrong with eating, what's so wrong with drinking, and what's so wrong about getting married. Most of us are married, right? And uh, some of you have girlfriends, boyfriends, you'll soon get married too. But, you know, what's so wrong about it? And verse 9, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man B. I find it uh, rather interesting that uh, this rather uh, indictment of the people of, uh, of Noah and knew not until the flood came. Now, the word knew not seems to me like they are totally oblivious. They have no idea that such calamity is going to come. But yet, Jesus said, now this is not uh, spoken by Jesus' disciples, it's spoken by uh, Jesus himself, and knew not. Which means to say that we people who are living in the last days may also not know. In other words, they were totally unprepared. Totally unprepared. 
But the reading of these few verses uh, also tells us to look back into the book of Genesis. For in it is recorded a template, an example of what it's going to be like in the last days when Jesus Christ comes. So let's uh, duly turn to uh, the book of uh, Genesis. Now, the chapter in the uh, book of Genesis that talks about uh, the uh, pre flood and to diluvian condition is found in chapter 6. But then, if we are to, to uh, read verse uh, 2, and uh, uh, 2, 3, and 4, then uh, we might uh, hit a turbulence. Turbulence is a sense that uh, these three verses are rather, to some people, controversial. You know what I mean? All right? So we need to understand these three verses in context. You know, and uh, if you look back uh, into the book of Genesis, uh, the first two chapters, chapter 1 and chapter 2, uh, it talks about God's creation. All right? And God declared that it was good and very good. So everything was very perfect in total harmony with God's will. But then as we progress to chapter 3 and chapter 4, men sinned and fallen from grace. And they were, uh, Adam and Eve was driven out of um, the Garden of Eden. And then as we read on to uh, the last part of chapter 4 and chapter 5, we find that uh, there are two lines of people. One line from uh, Cain and the other line from Seth. Of course, you know, uh, Abel was killed by Cain. That was the first murder, the first violent uh, uh, event that was recorded in the Bible. And we find that there are two lines of people. One line, uh, they are the rebellious, wicked line from uh, uh, Cain. And the other line, the descendants from Seth, and they are generally regarded as God's people. A people, a line of, of, uh, of uh, people that believe and worship God. Then we come to uh, chapter 6. All right? And in, and in verse 1. And it kind of uh, describes the condition of uh, the anti, uh, anti-diluvians. All right? Now, we talk about the word anti-diluvian, it sounds like a very difficult word to understand. But I'm not going to assume that we all know uh, this word. You see, uh, the word diluvius means deluge. In other words, flooding, right? Anti means before. So anti diluvians are people that live before the flood. All right? So let's see what uh, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 6 uh, tells us. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, verse 2, that the sons of God, which line of people? Uh, the line of those people that are descendants from Seth, all right? Saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So who are the daughters of men? All right? They are the people who are descendants from Cain. As we all know, the uh, background uh, and history of uh, these two lines of uh, people. And uh, what was the order of the day? Well, the women were very beautiful. Yeah? We think that uh, Miss Universe is beautiful, Miss Penang is beautiful. Well, in, the, in America, the black people like to uh, have this uh, expression, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> So, you know, it, it was astoundingly beautiful. And that attracted uh, God's people. And the Bible tells us that uh, they took them as wives, whichever that pleased them. All right? Do we see that today? Well, you uh, make a call. And verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, 
which were of old, men of renown. You know, when I first uh, read my first science book, uh, I couldn't quite remember which level, maybe standard six, you know, uh, I saw pictures of uh, primitive men, you know, uh, half, half stood men uh, that carries a club. And uh, the science uh, told me that uh, I am the descendants of, uh, of this uh, cave people, or cave men. But when you look at the Bible, it kind of tells us a different story. That the ancient people, they are not cavemen. They are not people that deal with uh, 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 sticks or twigs and clubs. They are people of high intelligence. All right? They are mighty men, you know. Physically, you know, we cannot compare with them. Physically, they are large, they are huge, they are strong. You know, I go to the gym, gym almost uh, every day. I see men trying to be like giants of antediluvians. They grunt and scream, trying to carry weights to build muscles. You know, we have to strive so hard to be just a fraction of their physical nature. But during those days, they were very well, you know, physically endowed people. Intellectually, there's no comparison. Every individual, every man and woman were Albert Einstein's. Now, we all know who Albert Einstein is, a man known for his huge, unlimited uh, uh, mental capacities. But there's a difference. The difference is, during those days, People can live up to 800 years. 800 years. Can you imagine that uh, if uh, Albert Einstein is able to live 800 years? We don't know what he would be able to invent. We don't know what we, we, we have missed as a result of the early death of Albert Einstein. You know, there are evidences in the Bible in chapter uh, 4 which uh, tells us the descendants of uh, Lamech, which is from the line of uh, Cain. And these people were working with uh, metals, uh, not only iron, you know, brass, but with bronze and so on and so forth. And Jubal or Jabal, I don't know which is which, the name is so similar. And uh, he is a uh, master musician, for he invented various kinds of uh, instruments. And so you think that uh, our instrument is uh, high-end, uh, top-notch. But here again, you know, we do not know, just simply do not know, the society of the anti -Danubians. Their technology is probably unheard of. We think that we are, we have everything. We know it all. We have all the you know, handheld uh, uh, gadgets and all that, you know, and we think that we have arrived. But I suspect that we are just achieving just a small fraction of the technology that is possible or that was possible during the time of the antediluvians. Well, the Bible didn't tell us very much, yeah, but uh, we can imagine, you know, uh, from the pen of inspiration from the book, uh, Patriarchs and Prophets of... Patriarchs and Prophets of Prophets from Patriarchs, I don't know it. Patriarchs and Prophets, all right. You know, and from uh, the book, uh, um, uh, Volume 1, Special Gifts, you know, it gives us a little bit more light as to the kind of society with regards to the time of the anti Danubians. And then verse 5, what did he say? Let's uh, go back to the book of Genesis. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagi imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Wow, what a description, you know? You know, man uh, had the capacity of a keen intellect 
and they live long, and obviously they can uh, accomplish much. However, you know, if that huge degree of intelligence were to be used negatively for wickedness, we can imagine the immense level and degree of uh, cruelty, wickedness, and sin that would have existed during the time of Noah. Because God saw it. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every, you know, this one verse tells us, no, using very absolute terms, the word every, uh, 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 only, and the word continually. Now, I don't know for how long. I suppose, you know, if uh, the uh, command or the message given to uh, Noah, and Noah take 120 years to complete the arch, I mean the ark, before the flood came, it would have been at least uh, 120 years. But I believe that uh, before that, it has been wicked. It's kind of very difficult to uh, imagine how a uh, man can be that uh, evil and, uh, and uh, wicked all the time. Um, but give me a little bit of glimpses as to its reality of possibility. You know, I don't know about you, but I believe that some of you do uh, receive video clips, small video clips once in a while, to WhatsApp or whatever, demonstrating the wickedness of uh, men. Now, I'm, see, I, I'm sure you, you, you would have come across such terrible uh, cruelty. Now, how about men's cruelty towards men? I'm sure you're aware of that. You know, if you were to view those um, video clips, I think it can be very revolting. I've seen those, you know. And uh, crimes against uh, children, uh, women, uh, human trafficking, how people were uh, treated. You no, know, we can go on and on and on and on, you know. Uh, and then uh, verse 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both men, beasts, creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. When I read this verse, I know, finally, you know, one funny idea came to my mind. It said, what happened to the fishes? The fishes were not mentioned. I suppose that they are not uh, destroyed. Because they live in water. They flourish in water. The more water, the merrier. Also, the whales and the giant fish, I think they are that. I do not know. But, you know, the Bible tells us that uh, you know, God regretted in making man for him to cease and witness such uh, wickedness and sinfulness. And uh, the Lord said that he has to destroy man. You know, when we uh, look at um, what we have just read so far, we can begin to see the parallelism of these events in our day. You know, it is always the Satan's the purpose, calculated purpose, to subvert what God has instituted. Now, for example, uh, at the end of creation, there are two institutions which God has created. What are they? Sabbath and marriage. And you look at the uh, history of the world, you find that it is his calculated purpose to subvert to produce a counterfeit. And we know that he is still at it as far as trying to subvert and enforce a counterfeit Sabbath. That is one of the twin institutions. The other institution is marriage. Today, you know, the gay rights movement has been accepted and recognized. What happened in the 60s and 70s if a person is known to be a gay or a lesbian, they will not be accepted. In fact, they will be derided, you know. 
you know, they will be looked upon as outcasts. But today, we find that people are openly professing who they are. They recognize that it is my right to an alternative lifestyle. You know, we hear people, especially uh, sports personality, artists, uh, musicians, uh, actors and actresses who have no qualms about uh, declaring who they are. You know, today we have more countries accepting same-sex marriages than five years ago. There are more than 100 old countries now that legalized same-sex marriage. Now, you think that it's going to get better? Well, you know, uh, another template that we can look at is recorded in the book of Luke, chapter 17, where Luke uh, recorded, similarly in Matthew, as in the days of Noah. But he had also re uh, recorded as in the days of Lot. And Lot, as, as we all know, was totally destroyed. Totally destroyed. And uh, sometimes we just wonder how is Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. Now I got a glimpse of that when uh, news came true just I think a couple of weeks ago that the uh, Chinese city of Tianjin, right, that was destroyed by a huge explosion. Wow, I saw that uh, amazing uh, a fire and the, and the aftermath. And I thought, this is how Sodom was destroyed. Total annihilation. And uh, as we uh, read uh, by, uh, the Bible record, that in the last days, our planet is going to be a ball of fire. Now, God is not going to use water to destroy the earth, but it's going to be a ball of fire. And we can read that in uh, 2 Peter, I believe, chapter 2. Now, earlier I've said that, uh, you know, the people, the antidiluvians, have a huge intellect. They have invented almost anything that is possible under the sun. You know, what Ecclesiastes Solomon said that, uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever will be, has been. You know, men today perhaps may not uh, match the um, capacity of the anti diluvian in terms of intelligence and whatnot. But we still, you know, are able to accomplish tremendously. You know, when I look at the uh, Book of Inspiration, um, I think uh, uh, Volume 1, Spiritual Gifts, it says that there's one sin, especially, that uh, made God to finally destroy the earth. There's this one particular uh, sin above all other sin. And he, um, the pen inspiration uses the word amalgamation. Now, what is amalgamation? Now, in my profession, you know, we use amalgam to, to fill people's teeth. You know, so I can understand the meaning of amalgamation. It is a mixing of different alloys, different types of things together to produce something different. You know, today we are living in a um, world with tremendous uh, amount of information and tremendous amount of discovery. You know, since the um, early 1980s, the human beings, scientists have gone into genetic engineering. And what we see today, you know, in the name of uh, medical advances, 
and discoveries for the betterment of health, we go into the uh, work of uh, stem cell. People are working with stem cells in order to produce tissue to uh, uh, replace old and worn out uh, organs. And that's good and fine, but we find that scientists today are going beyond that. They are, they are injecting a certain uh, genetic uh, uh, strain or traits into other species. You know, reptiles into birds, birds into reptiles, uh, into fishes, into plants, and, and whatnot. Not knowing exactly what will be the consequences. You no, know, I read an uh, article which says that uh, there are scientists who are working uh, quietly, on the quiet. And they were experimenting with this special ex experiment where they uh, uh, used the genetic material of DNA and it was injected into another animal. And the animal came about and within two weeks, they have no choice but to destroy this whatever that came out of it. You know, when I read the uh, book, uh, Dinosaurs, you know, um, the Adventist uh, perspective. If you go to a museum, you see this huge skeleton of these dinosaurs, right? T-Rex and whatnot. It makes me wonder, you know, can God, of course, if he wants to, he, he, he would. Would God create such a humongous, wild, ferocious animal? You know, you look at the body of the uh, skeleton of the uh, dinosaurs, they're totally out of proportion, you know? And uh, it has been surmised that uh, these huge, animals are not the creation of the world. It is as a result of man's meddling with the DNA material of the various species. Now, um, I'm just kind of uh, telling you uh, what I've read, uh, you know, some articles here, here and there. You know, they, you know scientists also uh, meddle with the genetic makeup of fishes. And most of them are re released back into the ocean. And uh, the worry is, what would it happen in terms of genetic contamination that's now wide open in the ocean? So the question is, are we approaching the time of the end? As a time of Noah, that's what Jesus said. The, you know, things is going to be repeated again. Perhaps what we see with regards to uh, genetic engineering is just the initial stage of what is to be. Can you imagine, you know, uh, years ago we have never thought about this area, but today, medical students, they have to study this new science. Now, what are we then to, uh, to do with all these uh, information. Well, let's jump to uh, verse 11. On the same chapter, uh, chapter 6, book of Genesis, verse 11, and the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, corruption and violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. You know, Noah is considered as a man of righteousness. If you turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7, it says that, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, moved with reverence, prepared an ark 
to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. No, every strike of the hammer in building the ark stood as a witness to the people on Noah's day. Every blow as recorded in the spirit of prophecy. Sometimes I just wonder what is the equivalent you know, of our day. I thought of the Sabbath, which is a very evident sign of the truth as part of the three angels' uh, messages. Something that is visible, that draws people's attention. You know, every blow of uh, Noah in building the ark stood as a witness to the people during his days, during his time. Let's turn back to uh, the book uh, of Matthew, chapter 24. And let's drop down to verse 42 and 44. Watch therefore, for ye know not what your, uh, know not our, your Lord doth come. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So what was what, it uh, trying to tell us to do? Watch and be ready. It means to say what? Preparation. Now, we cannot prepare if we are not watchful, right? We cannot prepare if we are not alert. Let's turn to the book of, uh, well, the book of Peter. You know, Saint Peter tells us that uh, there will be scoffers and all that. You know? I think we all will experience uh, much of that. Scoffers, you know, uh, you can go home and uh, read for yourself. Um, First, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, um, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. You are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. No, we cannot prepare without being, watch, be, without being watchful, without being sober. You know, I saw uh, Hussein Bolt. You know who is Hussein Bolt, right? Who recently won the 100 meters and 200 meters dash. Now, I know that as an athlete, you need to prepare. There's no way that, uh, you know, you can achieve such, uh, at, uh, such high level of uh, sports without preparation. How much time you spend in the gym, you know, strengthening and toning his muscles. When you look at those athletes that line up in the starting block, look at their build. Look at the, the, the amount of preparation that went into uh, preparing. And they were serious. They have uh, psychologists uh, that work with them to fine tune their mind so that they can pick just right, you know, just at the right time. And so these verses calls us and tells us that it's time for us to prepare, be sober, be watchful, and be alert. May God bless us as we uh, consider his word from the scriptures.